The arts sector here in Australia is feeling the impact of the coronavirus with bans on public gathering causing concerts and theatre productions to be cancelled. The Melbourne Symphony Orchestra has found a way for the show to go on, broadcasting concerts on YouTube for free. Sounded like that could have been the soundtrack for a movie about coronavirus. Sophie Galace is the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra's Managing Director and she joins us now from Melbourne. Sophie Galace, welcome. So extraordinary times call for innovative ideas. That was night one of the new setup last night. How did it go? Wonderfully well. So we were so impressed. Uh, by the time the concert ended, we had 5,500 people. Wow. That's double the audience of uh, the Art Centre Hemeral. And this morning, 35,000 people had viewed the concert. It's like 16 times wow. Hemeral. Wow. <laughs> and they were, which is so good, it came from all over the, the planet. The only continent where we uh, we were not viewed is Antarctica. We had people <laughs> which is surprising in because there are some pretty keen Aussies down there. Well, they, they didn't tune in. <laughs> <laughs> they'll know next time now because they watch ABC, they'll be watching this. But it was a bit strange without the applause. Did you realise how important an audience was? Yes. Actually, it was um, it was a little frightening for our musician to, um, to think that um, they were performing in, in front of an empty hall but at the same time reaching out to so many people. So they give it their best shot. It was a, an amazing concert, and we're very proud to keep the music going because it is so important in uh, such times to be focusing on positive things. Um, I'm also very uh, happy to have seen people send photos of them and their children listening to the oh, MSO wow. after dinner in Australia. And we have engaged with people in remote region all over the country and all over the world. So that's a, a great start. Now we have to keep it going. So the next one is on Thursday. Yeah. So have you ever done this before? And, but, and if you haven't, does it feel like this is the start of something new because it's a way to uh, get in touch with so many more people? Well, we had in the past done some live um, stream, but of uh, Q&A or interviews with um, musician, conductors, uh, some little concerts and not little, but uh, smaller production. This time it's, uh, we went for the real thing. It was a great challenge. We managed to put that uh, all together in one week. And we're so happy that we can offer our uh, audience to actually um, keep engage with us. We, we are deeply committed to be embedded in our community and engaging with people. And so what program did you choose for the evening? So l last night we were uh, performing Rimsky Korsakov Sherazan, uh, Bloch Shelomo, a concerto for cello. And we had a musical acknowledgement of country, a piece that we commissioned from Deborah Cheatham, an amazing indigenous, wonderful Yorta Yorta uh, lady who wrote this first musical acknowledgement of country. We're a music organization. We de have decided last year that going forward, we would not uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the country uh, just verbally, but in music. Mm, wow. And was there a bit more verbal communication with the audience last night than they normally would be if you, if you were just performing uh, for the hall there? Oh, totally. And we actually um, discovered that we have an amazing star, one of our cellists, <laughs> who uh, was presenting the concert and he did so well. Anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> Uh, so what, so, what, what uh, it's so, I've got to say, uh, Sophie, it's so heartening to hear such a positive story. I've got goosebumps about this. Uh, but uh, just on another note, uh, pun intended, uh, what kind of financial impact is this going to have on the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra over the coming months? Well, like all my colleagues around the country, we are actually in a crisis mode, difficult situation. 
uh, with loss of revenues. So earned revenues are so important. It's a, it's a mighty part of our budget, nearly half of our bud revenues. And um, we are at risk of seeing these revenues go because people want to be reimbursed. Some of them are transforming this in a donation, but uh, it makes it very precarious for us to continue. We have had discussion at the board level that we were not sure we would survive past uh, the next spring. Wow. So meanwhile, we are committed to paying all our employees. And an orchestra is, eight, in our case, 88 wonderful permanent musicians, 45 and amazing stuff, but it's also more than 200 casuals and contractual who work for us and give it their best year-round. So um, we're actually hoping to get um, to to uh, actually prepare for a different future and uh, hopefully get some revenues. Um, link with uh, performance online yeah we totally ask, uh, i was going to say that you could put the call out if, you, if you're getting that many viewers maybe you can put the call out for people viewing to donate somehow which we did last night mm. and i'm i must say i'm very pleased this morning our donation report was 14 times bigger than our normal report wow that's so good small donation but it counts it yeah. really makes a difference in our life yeah. and as we hope we will make a difference in um, our audience is all around the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so when's the next performance? It's on Thursday night. And last night, I think we were the only one who live stream in the country and probably around the world because the world has gone dark. All these um, amazing orchestras, ballet company, opera have all um, stopped playing. Yeah. Okay, so so we will keep the music going. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo.